Take is this thing two. on? Yeast <laughs> <back in? laughs> Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a yeast starter. And it's pretty simple to do. Um, basically, what I'm going to use is a, uh, oh, a flask. Ooh, we're getting into the scientific... Oh! <laughs> we're getting into the scientific of things. I'm going to basically make a mini wart um, using about, um, about a cup of dry malt extract. What we're doing is we're going to take this yeast pack, which is good enough for a normal brew, and we're going to make the yeast like super yeast by actually activating it with some wort beforehand in this flask. And then we are going to add that once it cools down and everything to the wort that we just made from the Belgian that we just brewed. So I'm going to get started. Right now I have about a, what did I say, 650 milliliters of water boiling on the stove. Once that gets going, I'm going to add the sugar, cool that down, add the yeast, and then that's pretty much it. And you just um, you just wait about three, four hours, and we're done. Daddy. Okay. Right. okay, so I boiled the um, the wort. I boiled about a cup of sugar in some water, and now I'm going to pour it into the flask. And what I have here is a bowl of cold water that's going to chill the wort, and I'm going to add ice to it after I get the wort into the flask. And it says to pour carefully. So that's what I'm doing. I'm pouring carefully. Is that a Pyrex glass that you're using? It is a true Pyrex flask that you would use in a science. So it will not shatter is what you're trying to say. Exactly. Is well, that what you were trying to ask, <laughs> Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I got that in there. And it said that I should cover it with aluminum foil. You can get in there if you want. Cover it with aluminum foil while it's cooling. And then I'm just going to add some ice to it. Oops, that's water. You're wondering what they meant by true chemistry flask. <laughs> We're going to let that cool. <laughs> and once it cools, we are going to add the yeast to it and then let the yeast do its thing for three or four hours or whenever I decide to pitch it. The longer I wait, which is I think up to 12 hours, you should wait, the more yeast cultures I'll have. And, um,. That's it. Oh, you're just gonna have me. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just a waiting game. So we're just gonna wait. A couple people asked, you know, why do a yeast starter? Well, I have a little fact for you. Why do a yeast starter? <laughs> <laughs> um, the approximate cell count in billions for a regular bag that you would that you would pop and use in your yeast um, is I'm sorry, it's called a smack pack. Um, is 45 to 60 billion cell counts. When you do a yeast counter, that increases that up to 200 billion. So that just gives you more of a cell count that'll have more of those guys fighting and messing around with that sugar. Actually, you know what yeast does, right? It actually eats the sugar and then it poops out the carbon dioxide, <laughs> which makes the alcohol. Yeah, did you put the beer down? Pick it back up. Because you know that's not going to bother you. Definitely am fascinated with this. Um, I, I, I wish I could give you a better look, but the flask is definitely heating up in there because it's sweating in there. Uh, no real activity up here, but I know that there's some heat going on in there because like I said everything is heating up and it's bubbling pretty steadily in there I don't know if you can see there or not let me just put that straight with the table and that's all yeast activity right there my friend pretty cool stuff <laughs> 